Here's a quick look at the square root function, or I like to call this one the shooting star. And we'll see that graph in just a minute. Um, we're going to look at this graph, make sure we can get a really nice, accurate picture, and then we'll look at some characteristics as well. All right, so let's jump in. We know that normally, if we're creating a table to sketch a graph for the first time, we choose negative one, zero, and one as our x's. So this is the first function of our essential functions, where that's not going to work. We're going to have to make a small adjustment. And that's because the square root of negative one is not a real number, okay? We cannot work with that. It does not show up as anything on the graph. So we'll just put a dash or you can put undefined. So no negative x's are allowed in the square root function. Our first point will be when we substitute in zero for x. So the square root of zero is, of course, zero. The square root of one is one. And now don't just jump straight to two to get another point. If we chose two here, you're not going to have an integer point for your graph. And that's usually easier when you're trying to sketch. So think of your next perfect square. In this case, that's four. So we'll let x be four because the square root of four is two. All right, so those are our three points that we'll use. Let's go ahead and plot them. Zero, zero, one, one, and four, two. So our graph shoots out like this. It's the shooting star. All right, let's move on to domain. So this is the list of all possible x's, and we talked about that a little bit with making the table of values. No negative x's are allowed, and so we should be expecting what we get for our domain, but let's apply the typical method we use. We look from left to right to list in interval notation all the x's that are possible. So starting here at zero, zero, and then moving to positive infinity. And we see we have a point on the origin on zero, zero, so our domain will want to include zero, and it's all x's from zero to positive infinity. Okay, so the range, remember, you're looking at all the possible y's. Look from bottom to top on your graph. So your very first y is also here from the point at the origin. Its y value is zero. And then the y's move up, move up and go to infinity, although rather slowly. All right, so our range for this one is also zero to infinity. Bracket around the zero because we want to include it. It is a possible y value. All right, both our intercepts, both x and y intercepts are at the origin. And remember our two types of symmetry, y-axis and origin. So looking across the y-axis, we see there are no points at all in quadrant two. Um, so we know it can't be y-axis symmetry. And then if you rotated this graph around the origin 180 degrees, it would end up with most of its points in the third quadrant. Um, so it doesn't land on top of itself. So it can't be origin either. Uh, this square root graph has no symmetry or none. All right, let's finally move to our intervals of increasing or decreasing. So remember, you put your pencil on the leftmost point of your graph and then move from left to right. Use the x's to talk about what the y's are doing. So hopefully you're getting more used to describing these intervals. Um, more practice, you'll get even better at it. But we should be just looking at this graph and thinking, okay, well, if I put my pencil on my leftmost point and move from left to right, my as my x's are increasing, so are my y's. So this is an increasing interval. And we'll say it's increasing from our first point at zero, our x of zero, on to infinity. So it's only increasing, there are no decreasing intervals. And just like we always do with increasing or decreasing intervals, we use parentheses. So we are increasing from zero to infinity and decreasing nowhere. All right, this was our quick look at the square root function or the shooting star.